at least. You can't, you can't take us down without an army, folks. So the Most High is gathering all you Gentile nations in the valley of Jehoshaphat. You think it's for the New World Order and for Halliburton. No. It's so that the Most High can crush the power of your army in the Middle East. And there's a declaration that will go out throughout the four corners of the earth that the children of Israel are free. You can't enslave us without an army, folks. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You cannot fight a spirit with physical weaponry. Read on. Verse 20. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord. That's when all the Gentiles are going to bring all of our people and say, listen, I got an Israelite. Just don't, just don't hurt me. Look, I got I got some of your people. I took care of them. I made sure he was clean. I made sure he's fed. Just don't destroy me. I'm not, I'm, I'm not dealing with Buddha here. I'm not dealing with Allah no more. And I got an Israelite. <laughs> Read. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules, and upon swift beasts, to my holy mountain, Jerusalem, saith the Most High, as the children of Israel bring an offering and a clean vessel into the house of the Most High. Go ahead. Verse 21. And I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith the Most High. And this is showing you that the Most High is going to set up a Levitical order under Christ. So the Levites still going to deal in their function under Christ the high priest. No more will they deal with voodoo and witchcraft and all that stuff they're dealing with. They're going to be priests under Christ, under the disciples. Read. Uh, verse 22. For as the new heavens and the new earth will I, excuse me, for as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Most High, so shall your, shall your seed and your name remain. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Most High. There will be one world worship. And it won't be under Satan either. Now this is the real new world order. This is the spiritual new world order. No more Buddha. No more Allah. No more, what, no more Krishna. No more other God that you've come up with. So there will be one God that all nations. And guess what? You think that us being delivered from Egypt was something. The whole world going to hear of this deliverance. Why? Because we are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And when they all hear that the Most High crushed their armies, they're going to know that our God, Ahia, is the God of all gods. Read on. Uh, verse 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. And they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Go ahead. Let's get the uh, next one here. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 39, uh, verse 11. <coughs> no. <coughs> okay. Well, we're talking about the birds is going to eat those those guys that are part of the armies there, right? Let's read it. Ezekiel 39 and no, it's Ezekiel 39 and 1 on down. It's talking right, about the carcasses. Right, right, right. All right. Mm -hmm. So before you go there, let's go to Isaiah 11. Mm -hmm. 11 and 1. I just need to deal with that for me. Some of the things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah chapter. Uh, 11 verse 1 because in Ezekiel 39 it speaks about the birds mm -hmm. that, that will that will come and eat their carcasses yeah mm -hmm. and in Matthew it says uh, uh, let's go to Matthew 24 and 25 that's the one mm -hmm. for Isaiah yeah Matthew 24 and 28 I think yeah Wait, read it again uh, Isaiah chapter no, me, uh, Matthew 24 and 28 yeah uh, Matthew chapter 24 uh, verse 28 yeah For wheresoever the carcass is, as a matter of fact, that's right. yeah. uh, verse 25, Behold, I have told you before, wherefore it shall, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, 
go not forth. That, that means if someone tell you that Christ is in the desert, don't believe him. Read. Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. So if someone tell you, well, I know where Christ is, don't believe him. Read. Verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Every eye shall see when he comes. So you don't have to believe someone when they tell you, yeah, I, I know where Christ is. Read. Verse 28. For wheresoever the carcass is, wherever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered there together. There will the eagles be gathered together. Eagles represent who? The Idumeans, the power of the Roman Empire. And it shows you that where, where the carcasses are, the eagles will be also. And when you link this up to the files, it's letting you know that their armies will be destroyed and eaten by the birds. He's preparing the birds in Ezekiel, it tells you, for the prey, for the people who are in the Middle East, their armies. That's the feast he's preparing for the birds. Let's get it real quick. Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 1. This is where the carcasses is, the eagle shall be also, showing you that what, what empire that's behind all these wars. Yeah, the Roman Empire. And wherever they go, death comes. Wherever the army comes, there's death. Let's read it. Ezekiel. Uh, chapter 39, verse 1. Read. Therefore the son, of the, the son of man prophesy against God and say, Thus saith the Most High Ahiah, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Verse 2. And I will bring thee back and leave thee, and I will turn thee back and leave thee, but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. And I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. And thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and all thy people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort. So this is the future of the armies that will come against us. Now most people would like to relate this to Russia. I went into Genesis the 10th chapter earlier to show you that it's speaking of the Asians. Why? Because the Idumeans are already in the Middle East. What, what family have to be turned back and bring their armies into the Middle East? That's China. China was the original people who was living around Russia, like the Mongols. If you don't believe that, look at the Eskimos that went through the Barren Strait. The dark-skinned Asians who once lived in Russia. Those are the original Japhetic people, not the people in Russia right now. So this is talking about the Asians coming in. And at the very end, you think they're, they're fighting against each other. They're actually there to band together against us. Eventually, they're going to stop fighting each other and say, you know what? Let's go to those people over there in those unwalled villages and let's kill them because this is the real reason this whole thing is happening. The Most High is trying to save them. Let's come together. Let's, let's stop our arms against each other and let's kill them. That's what they're doing in the Middle East. They're going to stop fighting each other and begin to war against us. Okay? All right. There's a few more. What time is it? Okay. We got this now. All right. Let's go to the one in Isaiah 11. Isaiah chapter 11, uh, verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Most High shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria. Now, this is showing you the places that the Most High will deliver his people from. So if anyone wants to, to know what places Christ will gather his people, it's Isaiah the 11th chapter. <coughs> Read. And it shall come to pass that in that day that the Most High shall set his hand again the second time to reco recover the remnant of his People, his people who were scattered, read. Which shall be left from Assyria and from <clears throat> Egypt and from Pathros. So they're going to be gathered from Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, go ahead. And from Cush 
Cush, that's parts of Ethiopia, we were dispersed in Ethiopia, read. And from Elam, and from Sh Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. And, he and from the islands of the sea. The islands of the sea is speaking of the great sea, which is today called the Mediterranean. The isles of the sea are the isles around the Mediterranean when you do your research. So it's not talking about people that are in the Caribbean islands and all that. The isles of the sea is speaking of is the seas within the Mediterranean. Read. Verse 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations. Let's go to Isaiah 11. What verse you left off at there? Uh, verse 12. Okay, one moment. Let me get there with you. Isaiah 11. And 12, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Read on. Uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 12. I want you to read this where it says C, which is Yam. Uh, yam. A C, or large body of water, specifically with article the Mediterranean. The what? The Mediterranean. The what? The Mediterranean. And that's Hebrews. That's that. What's the Hebrew number for that? Uh, Hebrew, thirty-two twenty. Exactly. So it's talking about the islands that are around the Mediterranean, which are thousands of islands that our people will be gathered from. All right. Read on. Uh, Isaiah chapter eleven, verse twelve. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcast of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And he shall what? And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcast of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Go ahead. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah. And Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Now you notice he said he shall set up an ensign. Now remember we were in Isaiah and it showed you that the sign would be us going into those different places. Letting everyone know that Israel is to come back to Jerusalem. That's going to be a sign to different places. The Most High is going to send out the ships to different places and let them know. He's going to set up certain people to do that as a sign that it's over. Read on. Uh, verse 13. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Now it says the envy of Ephraim shall depart because there's, there's been a chasm between the northern and southern kingdom. Okay, you have, you have those who would say, well, the, the Indian tribes who went to America and all that in, in South America are not God's people because they are at variance, in variance with black people. But the Bible tell you that that was placed there. When Christ returns, no more will that will that wall be there between our brothers who came there first. We will know we're brothers again. We will stop fighting against each other and vexing each other. That's what the scriptures are saying there. Christ will tear that down. So because they are against us the way they are proves that they are who the Bible says they are. There was a split that came between us and them. After the sin of Solomon. Okay. Go ahead. Ephraim shall not vex, shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. No longer will we fight against each other like we've done in the past. Go ahead. Verse fourteen. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their land their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the.